Hey everybody, this is Christer. Um, I am rather pleased today. I, I, um, I've been working on a, a little uh, helper for my Decker's Dream that would um, do a couple of different things. Um, well, so a long time ago, <coughs> I experimented with, uh, with uh, I spent about five minutes to hack together some kind of s s ribbon thing based on something called a soft pot, which is a potentiometer that you can touch and drag. Um, I never really finished that, um, but I always intended to, and now I did. So, so that's that's number one, uh, and I'm going to show that shortly. Um, another thing is my uh, and Sonic EPS, which was and this old sampler that had polyphonic aftertouch, and I liked it for that. Um, doesn't work anymore uh, temporarily, I'm sure, because I haven't tried to fix it. <coughs> but but that got me thinking we really should have a solution for polyphonic aftertouch and uh, I uh, discovered when I kind of was playing with that that the way I play I don't really need polyphonic aftertouch I really just need one key aftertouch so I came up with this thing and I was very proud of myself for coming up with it that <coughs> just converting regular channel aftertouch to polyphonic polyphonic aftertouch for the last key would kind of give me pretty much what I need. It's not truly polyphonic, it's kind of pseudo-polyphonic, right? Um, I was incredibly proud that I came up with this and I was going to do it and then I, I read on a forum that um, Balor and the River does that. Uh, good for them, uh, good for him to come up with that. Um, I, I, I thought I came up with it but apparently I didn't. So anyway, uh, I implemented it and it works really well. So today I'm going to show the Deckard Helper. Um, one second. So uh, this, oops, this is a Teensy microcontroller. Some uh, nonsense circuits uh, here. Uh, a MIDI input and uh, nope, here a MIDI output and a connector to this uh, which is a soft pot that's uh, Deckard's little helper let me uh, connect this thing like there maybe so so first of all the this slider uh, it kind of works in a delta uh, movements so if I press a key and I press down on the slider, nothing changes. Not until I drag. Up or down. So it's tr this is actually sitting in line between the keyboard and the, the synth to kind of, uh, and, and right now it's emitting pitch bend messages. So this is set for uh, an octave, uh, 12 semitones uh, for pitch bend. So. Uh, but <coughs> yeah, so 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 it, it it works so that if you press a key anywhere you can anywhere you press is a bass line, and after that you're free roaming. But that also means so I can set um, I can press a key, set my bass line, and then I can. It only ignores that first jump when you go from basically zero to wherever you're at, and there's uh, there's some amount of filtering and stuff like that to make uh, to make it smooth and not noisy and stuff like that. But it actually seems to work really well. I am really pleased with that. Uh, so another thing is the uh, pseudo polyphonic aftertouch hack, which is basically when I play. See, I'm pressing on the top key here now, right? Because I've just 
lifted that key and pressed it again. Anyway, that works surprisingly well. I'm super happy because now I can use this. Uh, I really like this keyboard. It's an Ovation something or other, SL62. Um, and I like the keypad. Uh, but of course, it's uh, it's just channel aftertouch. But now I can use it for this and for the Kijimi as well. Um, happy about that, happy about that. So I will probably publish how I that's all done and uh, and uh, put schematics up somewhere. Anyway, that's it. Uh, that's a short little demo, but uh, yeah, well, you know, not all of them have to be long. <laughs> uh, you guys have a good one.